She says, I've never felt such bitterness. The Death Star construction Yeah, great, fine, whatever. That flight was a f***ing nightmare, man. My stupid tray table broke and I ended up with a gallon of coffee in my crotch. It's like dunking my wang in hot lava. Something you have some experience with, I guess, huh? Right? Yeah. Hello there, I'm Darren. I'm Kat. And welcome to The Real Sequels, the series of events that happened after episode 6 in the books, novels, and sometimes comics in the expanded universe. Today we're opening with chapter 7 of Dark Force Rising. Mm -hmm. So, chapter 7 opens aboard the Millennium Falcon, just over Endor. The Millennium Falcons arrived a little bit early, and Chewie's not particularly happy about it. They've just arrived, and they're waiting to find the Nogri, Kabarak. <laughs> They're looking for Caprac. He hasn't arrived yet. And Chewie's a wee bit suspicious of this. He's like, That's exactly what he said. <laughs> he was like, you have to start in your nose and then go down. So you go like, Rrr. you know? Wow. To which Leia's like, oh, come on. If this were a trap, don't you think we'd be, it'd be like a Star Destroyer, an Interdictor Cruiser, you know? It'd be a whole bunch of things. So at this point, uh, C-3PO interrupts things and he's like, he's found some some sort of problem on the on the Carbanti countermeasures package. And Chewie's kind of like, ugh, because in the typical fashion of the Millennium Falcon, as soon as it went into hyperspace, a few systems knocked offline. Chewie definitely has some comments. What does he say in the comics? I can't remember. He goes, Greg Fraggle. <laughs> Fraggle. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Leia's like, oh, come on, we'll make a repair droid out of him yet. So we then see Leia looking out over Endor. She puts her hand on her stomach and starts to talk to her unborn twin. She says, you see that moon, my dears? That's Endor, where the Rebel Alliance triumphed over the Empire and the New Republic began. And then she hears something from Chewbacca and then just fade to black. She awakens um, about five minutes later with C-3PO hanging over her. And she says she's all right, but she does not really understand what happened. And now we're back to How Did I Get Here? The only show that makes you ask yourself, how did I get here? <laughs> Here's our first person. Oh, oh my God. How did I get here? Hello? Kind of a thought enters her mind. And she asks Chewie if the orbit takes us through the position where the Death Star blew up. To which Chewie says, snarg. And roughly that means, yeah, about five minutes ago, we passed that. And that's where Leia says, yeah, that would be about right. Um, she says, I've never felt such bitterness. The Death Star construction. Yeah, great, proceeding. fine, whatever. That flight was a f***ing nightmare, man. My stupid tray table broke and I ended up with a gallon of coffee in my crotch. It's like dunking my wang in hot lava. Something you have some experience with, I guess, huh? <laughs> and then she's you know, gets everyone back to work. She's okay, but make, tries to make sure that they don't go through that area again. Um, she says that it felt like what Luke described on Dagobah, you know? Yeah. So that kind of, where the Emperor died, kind of ha has that wound in the Force still. We then flip straight over to Illic. Anne is being like every parent teaching their child to drive. You damn brat! Well, Stephanie, gently extend your arm. Extend your middle finger. So Hans kind of disguised this as, here, Lando, will you give me a lift? <laughs> so Hans like, right, okay, let, let's head out. And uh, Lando knows there's something else. Han, there's always something else, you know. And uh, he's like, give me the hook. And he's like, oh, there isn't a hook. You know, I'm just... I was just looking for a lift. If you want, of course, if you want to hang around and give us a hand, you might be able to work a deal to unload those spare metals you got lying around. Of course, this is the Hephridium. Lando's like, I knew Luke told you about that, didn't I? I'm going to strangle him. Jedi or not, I'm going to strangle him. Wait, you little... <laughs> hand stops and they notice that there's a, a Bothan down on the streets. It's Tav Borrelia, one of Thalia's top aides. And Han's decided that he's going to follow him. But they don't want to get too close because if he's noticed them, then obviously if they, they could notice him. So he tells Lando to head to the Mishra to grab Luck and catch up with him. So Han slinks off. He's following Tav through the streets. And then he feels a gun in the back of his head. And it's a grey-haired lady. And she tells him to put his gun down and his communicator. And she asks him if he'd like a guided tour. So Han puts both the communicator and the blaster down on the ground and he flicks on the communicator. So he rolls over and he's, he's trying to be a wee bit charming and tries to kind of talk his way out of it. So she picks up the communicator and the blaster and she doesn't look at it, but she turns it off and she says, I'm disappointed. He's this... just played the oldest trick in the book. Well, see, hiding behind an asteroid is the oldest trick in the book. This is the oldest trick in the list. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she takes Han and... Uh, 
scoots him off. And then we go to the Mishra, which is like a, a cantina. And actually Luke is sitting there and he kind of takes in the area. The smells, the looks, and just how mixed the crowd is. It's just a huge mix of all types of aliens. And he's taken back to that first time he meets Sam in Moss Eisley Cantina. And he just kind of takes do, that in for his thing. <laughs> that one? Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing. Even notes that the jizz is very similar. The jizz? Yeah. Yeah, so those are those are jizz wheelers. <laughs> jizz wheelers. Yeah, okay. so there he's standing at the bar filling his ears with sweet, sweet jizz, mm-hmm. and uh, he hears a crash, um, to which a, a droid runs over behind him. He pulls out his lightsaber and doesn't ignite it, but holds it there. A droid runs over and says, No blasters, no blasters. And then that droid gets shot in the face. So the bartender shouts out, hey, that's going to cost you. Luke turns around and it is a Barabel and a Rodian. Barabel's the one who's shot. He tells the barkeep that uh, the Rodian will pay for it and the Rodian disagrees. <laughs> this is about to kick off. The Barabel claims that, that he's been cheated. He calls on the Jedi for judgment and uh, looks like taken back because he's like, what? <laughs> he's just enjoying his hot chocolate. I know. I know. I love the fact he's having a hot chocolate. Well, see, that, that's a thing. It's a, it's a long running thing of he just loves hot chocolate Aww, in expanding directions. <laughs> no green teddy milk for him. Give me some of the hot chocolate. So it looks like, oh crap. And he has that a real feeling in his gut because he thinks back to his training and he's like, Obi Wan taught me that the Force exists. Yoda taught me how to control it. But he's never actually took on this new Jedi role of having that kind of authority over some disputes. Yeah, it takes a deep breath, walks over and tells them to both take down their guns. Commands his heart to slow. Commands, commands his heart to slow. Yeah, he does indeed. Commands his heart to slow. Yeah. <laughs> he. Like, knights his lightsaber and puts it in between them. Well, now they can't shoot you. So now, Luke says, right, okay, first to the barbell, what's up? And the barbell says, he hired me for a tracking job, then he paid me in money that's no good. Luke takes a look at it and realizes, this is Imperial script, uh, only good on Imperial worlds, and tell him you were going to be paying him on this. Uh, to which the Rodian says, something. So, um, looks like, oh, crap. And then he's, he's kind of going, oh, if I ask for an interpreter in this crowd, I'm going to lose all respect I had. And then suddenly from the crowd, someone answers. He says that's how he was paid. He argued, but it didn't do any good. And it turns out it's Lando. So Lando says that. And he's like, oh, thank goodness. So then Luke says, what's the official exchange rate? And Lando says, no idea. Because technically the New Republic doesn't recognize the Imperials. The Imperials don't really recognize the New Republic. So there's no real uh, exchange rate. So then Luke Knowing when the way Lando is and no one kind of being hanging around Han and stuff like that there, he's like, okay, what's the unofficial exchange rate? And Lando says, no idea. So then Luke looks at the Rodian and then reaches out with his feelings. And he's kind of thinking, if I don't come back with anything, at least this will kind of like intimidate the Rodian a little bit. And then he goes, he says, would Niles Ferrier step forward, please? So um, Niles Ferrier, just trying to enjoy a drink. He's like, ah. Panini. <laughs> and the panini. He's like, what do you want? And he's like, I need an unofficial exchange rate between Imperial and New Republic currencies. And Niles is like, this is your problem. So leave me out of it. He's still kind of bitter from the last time they spoke. Uh, and then the whole crowd is kind of turning against Niles because this whole crowd, like, there's a, a, a good bit of respect for the Jedi. Mm. Um, it seems to be like the, the barbell kind of represents the way the crowd feels. I know, it's like, how dare you insult the Jedi? <laughs> There's a wee bit of mumbling and growling and grumbling. Now it's just spurts out, ugh. It's a five to four Empire Republic conversion. And Luke says, thanks very much. He's like, okay, Rodian, pay the barbell with New Republic script. And the Rodian says he doesn't have enough New Republic currency. Barabell starts getting angry again, telling him that that's a lie. And then looks like, right, okay, there must be another way. And... Nile says, fix it yourself. I don't owe you any favors. And the barbell just does not take well to this. And he goes up to him and he says, uh, you talk respect. R-E-S-T-E-C-P. Do you even know what that spells? Respecta? <laughs> Looking up at this freaking like nine foot tall lizard man, Niles is like, all right, it'll have to be five three exchange. So essentially, Niles has to pay. So Niles is going to do this exchange. He's going to give these guys uh, New Republic money for the Imperial script because he spends more time in the Imperial world doing jobs for them. Barabel says, I accept judgment. So that's that sorted. Look, breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> 
Lando says, nicely done, and that Han is following one of Felia's pals. Just as that happens, an alarm starts going off. Lando says, it's an Imperial raid. So this chapter ends with Luke and Lando come to the conclusion that if the Empire is coming here, then they need to be as inconspicuous as possible. So Lando is going to go and erase them from the air control computer, and he's going to send R2 with him so he can help. And Luke heads in the direction that Han started off. But yeah, kill the episode. It's kind of nice to see Luke really out of his comfort zone. And like trying to be proper Jedi. Yeah, trying to be pro- proper Jedi because it's, you know, not all about beating people with big glow sticks and, and throwing uh, rocks. And using your mind as a VCR. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's all unfolding. It's all happening. Well, that's about all we've got time for for this week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I've earned it. And check out some of the videos of this one. See you all next time. Bye. Bye.